My name is Don Chesney. I have stage four uh, melanoma cancer. Uh, I've been married to a, my, my wife, Jane, for over 36 years. We live in an adult lifestyle community in Freelton, and we have a little, uh, little dog named Brooke. So I thought you'd give the, a little bit of history there. So um, I'd like to, to tell you about my, my life with melanoma. It was four years ago this month that I walked into a walk-in clinic in Burlington. I, I was, had severe headaches, or not severe, but I had constant headaches, and I felt a little lump on the back of my neck, and I didn't know what it was. And as soon as I went into that clinic, the doctor said that, um, well, it's a sebaceous cyst. If you, if you don't know what a sebaceous cyst is, it's a, it's a sac underneath the skin with liquid. And, and that doctor said, it's very easily taken care of, a little bit of surgery, and no problem, let's do a... Um, an ultrasound, and and we'll get we'll take care of it. So we had the ultrasound, and then, you know I walked out of there. I originally went in there looking for some extra pain meds, but I walked out of there and I thought, hey, this is great. I know what it is. And I forgot to ask about the pain meds. Um, but I, I went back to my family physician, and and he uh, he he looked at it, and first off he said, well, why did they do an ultrasound? And I said, I don't know. And and I guess he got the results. And he said, I'm going to send you for an X-ray. Um, and, and so I went and had the x-ray and I went back to him and, and by this time it was growing a little bit further. The, the ultrasound actually showed that there were two small uh, cysts at that time. Um, and, and I went back to him and, and he, it was growing a little bit larger and, and he suggested that I go to a surgeon. And he lined up a surgeon and I went to the surgeon. And by this time it had moved around a little bit. and. Uh, the surgeon looked at it and he said, well, I, I, if I do surgery, and I, he said, I, it, I really would rather not do it, but if I do surgery, it's, it's exploratory <laughs> surgery, and, and then we'd have to do a, a probably a, a, a um, plastic surgeon would have to do some, some skin grafts or something over top of that. And, and it sort of scared me a little bit, and I thought, okay, thanks very much. So I, I waited about a month or two. And I went back to my doctor and I said, listen, I, I'm not happy with that. It's still growing. I still have headaches. I'd like an extra, I'd like a second opinion. So he said, um, okay, I'll line it up with another surgeon in Burlington. Um, and, and as I was walking out the door, the, my family physician said, don't worry, it's not cancer or anything. It's easily removed. So I went to a new doctor, a, a new surgeon. His name was... Um, Dr. Correa, and, and I don't necessarily want to give you all the names, but he, this surgeon looked at it, and at first when I, when I saw him, and, and by the way, it, it, you know it, as well as I do, it takes two months to get into one surgeon, two months to get into another surgeon. By this time, this was the, the lump was probably about the size of a, a peanut. Um, and, and growing, and I had massive headaches, and the headaches started to, a numbness started to go up to the top of my head and my scalp. So this uh, Dr. Um, Correa said that, well, it, it is growing too large and too fast. I'd, I'd like to talk to, I'd, I'd like to first off, let's do an MRI, and then I want to talk to another surgeon, because I don't really do that type of surgery. So. We did the MRI, and, um, and, and that was fine, and, and it came back, and I, and I went back to see him, and he said, he told me it was a soft tissue sarcoma at that time. Um, and I, I, okay, but, you know, I, uh, he said that he didn't do that, and he, ta he talked to one of his colleagues, and, um, and, and he told me that, uh, that I had cancer at that time. A lot of things went through my mind. I was there talking to him and getting that, that information on my own. My wife wasn't there. Um, and and, I, and I, all kinds of things were going through my mind. And as I was driving home, and I think, I think that was the first time I cried in a, in a long time ago. And obviously it, it affected me just like this is, <laughs> telling you my story. But, um, Jane and I talked through it for a long time after that, and, and, we, and she said that uh, we will get through this together. So um, I went to, Dr. Correa sent me to uh, St. Joseph. He knew a, a, a surgeon there, and he got some information about it. So he sent me to St. Joseph's, and I had a CT scan and a biopsy. Um, and, or he talked to someone at St. Joseph, and I went to uh, Joseph Brant and had a CT scan and a biopsy. And that's when 
um, the biopsy came, the results came back and uh, showed that I did have um, a, a cancer. Um, so I was referred to Jervinsky at that time. This is January 2016 now. Originally, it was November 2014 when I felt that, that lump. So you can see how long of a time frame this, this was. Um, so the first person that I met here at, at Jurovinsky was Dr. Ted Young, or Surgeon Ted Young. And, and, and the first thing he did after he looked at it, he said, this is complicated. Uh, and, and there were a lot of other doctors coming in and looking at it. There was a radiologist, I, I think, and came in and looked at it. And, and he said, I, I really, they all grouped together and they said, I, I really think you need to see our medical oncology group. Um, so four days later, I saw Dr. McWhorter. I need to, I need to get a drink here. <laughs> The other reason I have to have a drink every once in a while is from the medication that I'm on. It, it, it dries out my mouth. <laughs> um, so when I saw Dr. McWhorter, uh, I was in a, a, a lot of pain at that time. And um, Dr. McWhorter sent me for a, P, a, a PET scan and a CT scan. A PET scan, if you don't know what that is, they shoot radio, radioactive sugar into you and, and, and the Technician said, you're, you're, you're going to look like a Christmas tree. It shows everything that shouldn't be there. It, so it, it was, uh, I, I think it was a good result. Um, and when I went back to see Dr. McWhorter, then that's when I knew that um, I had stage three uh, melanoma. Um, in, in, and that was February 2016. And the plan at that time was to start on what Dr. McWhorter is showing you is ipilimumab. And I, I may have a hard time with those brand, <laughs> generic names, so I may switch to some of the brand names here. Um, and I was supposed to start that on the next Thursday after I saw her. But on the Monday before, Dr. McWhorter called me and said that she had been talking to some of her colleagues and some surgeons in the US, and, and she wanted to talk to me about um, some of the other drugs that could possibly they've had good success and that could possibly help me. And by this time, this was the size of a lemon on, on the back of my neck. And also there were some lumps on the side of my neck which were, uh, which were into the lymph nodes on the side of my neck. So we, we went back and forth, we talked about the pros and cons and, and Jane and I talked about it and obviously we, we came back um, shortly after that and said, yes, let's, let's do it. Uh, we we want to we want to try these drugs. So we lined everything up. We had to uh, we had to look at uh, who was going to pay for the drugs first off. And and luckily I, I I've been working all this time and I still work. And luckily my uh, benefit package paid for ninety percent of those drugs. And Inreach or or the uh, pharmaceutical company paid for the other. But those the two drugs that I started with were. Um, the brand name Taf Taflinar and Mechanists. And I found out later on that those drugs cost about $10,000 a month. Um, so luckily, my benefits paid for them. Um, and there probably were other, other opportunities to, to have it paid, but at least I, I was comfortable that my benefit package paid for them. The drugs were shipped to my house from Kingston, a pharmacy in Kingston. They were shipped to my house in March, and I started... Uh, taking them, and, and at, at this time, the, my neck was ballooning, um, and obviously the, the lump. Within two days of taking those drugs, I felt the, a decrease in size in the lymph nodes on my neck. Within a week, the headache stopped completely. And then over a period of time, you know, um, it, it started to go less and, and actually, you know, my wife and I thought because the headaches are gone and I, I hadn't, at that time, I hadn't, in, in March, I hadn't had a lot of side effects from the drug. So uh, we thought we, we should go and see our nephew in Montreal. And why not? I feel good. I don't have headaches. So we thought we'd go down there in Montreal and, and try. Um, and and we, we drove down there. We stopped halfway in Gananoque, and, and as we were driving in, we saw this little casino, and we thought, hey, let's go over to the casino for a little bit. 
So um, we went in there, and about a half an hour later, I sat down at the slot machine, and, and you know, I wasn't feeling all that well. And I sat down, and I, I started to feel really cold. And, and then I hit the button, and I hit a jackpot. <laughs> cool. Uh, <laughs> but then I started shaking, and really shaking. And I, I, I couldn't stop the shaking. And I told my wife, I, th I think we're going to have to have to leave. I, I, I'll just put the money in my pocket and let's leave. <laughs> it's the right thing to do, right? <laughs> um, so uh, we went back to the hotel, and that night was was a bad night because um, I, I I started shaking. I, I started to I, I took some um, Tylenol to try and to try and calm myself down, but I vomited from that. I had diarrhea. I had. Um, uh, the shaking, and I only slept maybe two or three hours that night. Um, but we, we continued on. We met um, my nephew in, in the uh, Maple Sugar Shack in, in Montreal, and, uh, and then we drove back. We had a great, great time. And the reason I'm telling you this is this was the first of the side effects that I, I experienced from, from the Tafelinar and, and Mechanist. Um, all the way through, you know, I, I saw Dr. McWhorter every three weeks in, in the lab. Uh, these, were, these were pills, actually, that I took at home. I didn't have to have uh, infusions or anything at that time. I continued to take the pills. Every, every three, three weeks, I'd come in and see Dr. McWhorter. Um, at one point, there was something on, the, on a CT scan with, with some lesions that showed up on my right kidney. We did a CT, uh, CT scan, and, uh, or, or actually, I think we did um, an ultrasound, and they weren't infectious, so that was good. You know, I, I, I get a little anxious when I have to go to a CT scan because I want the results. I don't know what the results are, but, but at that time, it was a good result, and it wasn't infectious, so, uh, so that was fabulous. And as we were going along, this went smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually, it went down to nothing. Um, and let me see here. In October 2016, um, I went and, and got the results. So, so by this time, the, 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 the lump on my head or the mass on my neck or the tumor, whatever you want to call it, um, had, had gone down to almost nothing. Uh, no surgery or anything, just with these three medications. And, and it was over a period of about eight months that I was taking these drugs. So just think $10,000 a month, $80,000 for those drugs. Um, and, and I was certainly thankful, um, obviously. But in October, I came back and we did, I got the results of a CT scan. And we found that, excuse me, we found that um, the, the drugs did take care of all of this, the Taflinar mechanist, but now um, the cancer and the melanoma transferred or, or moved down to two lymph nodes around my lungs. And they were starting to grow. So the, the drugs that I was taking at that time weren't helping these. So that's when uh, Dr. McWhorter got a hold of Teresa Stokes in the, medical, or in the clinical trial area. And we, we talked about, you know, how could, what can we do um, and we talked, you know, gave the, the pros and cons of the, of the clinical trial. So Jane and I decided, okay, let's, let's do it. And, and as Dr. Mark Order said earlier, clinical trial, you're, you're, I guess your name or your, you, is put in a bucket and you get whatever it is. So there's, there's a continuous clinical trial that can go two years or there's um, an intermittent trial that can go, I guess, six months and then stop and then six months. I was put on the two-year clinical trial. Um, and this now is, um, you know, the, the clinical trial. You, you go into the chemo lab and you get infusions every three weeks. It's only a, a half an hour infusion, but as, as someone mentioned earlier that, you know, it can take a long time. Uh, Don actually mentioned it, could, you know, by waiting and, you know, but I didn't, I didn't care because it, it seemed like everything was working. And I, <laughs> seemed like Dr. McWhorter was taking care of me and doing everything that possible to take care of me. So uh, when, I should say that when the uh, melanoma moved into the lymph nodes and around my lungs, that's when my cancer was, was upgraded to stage four because surgery couldn't be done and no radiation or anything else. So I, I guess 
um, and, and I may or may not be right uh, on this one, but I think that uh, that clinical trial was about the only government approved treatment uh, for uh, cancer that had traveled down. So um, we, we went ahead and, and we went on uh, and to a, a month later afterwards, I took my last dose of Taflinar Mechanis, and on November 4th, 2016, I was given my first infusion here of, uh, of Keytruda or Pembro um, in, the, in the chemo lab. And as I said, it, it, every, every two weeks or every three weeks, I do that. So that was in November. And as soon as January 2017, we noticed uh, a reduction in the size of the lymph nodes. Um, and, but, you know, there, there were side effects, obviously, uh, and the side effects are obviously rash and, uh, is what I experienced on, on the, uh, originally, uh, we tried several different creams, uh, at one time the, we had to delay the, uh, the infusions for a couple of weeks just to control the rashes and later on, uh, they developed on the forearms and my legs. Um, but applying the creams and everything, it, it was fine. In, uh, in November, uh, I, I just want to give you a little bit of a side story here. In November 2017, I returned to, to work full time in, in our Mississauga office. But I, I felt fatigued and I didn't know what it was. And, and I, I had trouble even climbing up three sets of stairs. And I had trouble cleaning the, you know, raking the leaves out in the front yard. So. I, I talked to Dr. McWhorter about it. We didn't know at that time whether it was the side effects of the drugs or what it was. And I was fatigued. I, I couldn't breathe. I lost my, lost my breath uh, quite a bit. And I was using my rescue inhaler quite a bit. I do have asthma, um, but I, I was using uh, it a lot. Um, so Dr. McWhorter, uh, we did an um, um, echocardiograph, I think it was. And then uh, that didn't show anything. I went and saw a cardiologist in the hospital, in Jervinsky Hospital. Um, he looked at me, we did some other tests. Um, nothing showed up, but he said he wanted to uh, put me on a stress test. If, you have, if you've done a stress test, that was a wonderful thing. <laughs> um, and, and I got through the tr stress test, and well, I didn't get through with it. I you know, had to sit down after a little bit. Um, and in the meantime, I didn't get the result yet, but in the meantime, I ran out of the rescue inhaler, so I had to, uh, to go to my uh, new physician, because my old physician, you know, the guy that said, don't worry, well, he retired. <laughs> um, so the new physician, I went to him, and, I, and one, I, I told him what was, I was going through, and one of the first things he said is, how much uh, uh, rescue inhaler are you using? And I told him, he said, well, your asthma is out of control. Um, and, and he said, I want, to, I want you to try this drug. So I tried it. I picked it up on a Sunday morning, and in the afternoon, I took, a, I took a, a, one inhale of it, and by the afternoon, I could, I could feel that I was breathing deeper. And this, this um, new drug for asthma um, corrected all my problems. And the reason I'm telling you this is that whatever side effects or whatever problems you have, um, Dr. McWhorter or the, the whole team here, can, they, need, they need to understand what's causing it, right? Because it could be part of the drugs. It could be your treatments. It could be whatever it is, right? And, and I'm, I'm thankful for, for Dr. McWhorter to, to line all of that up. And I found out it was my asthma. And my rescue inhalers now, I don't use them anymore. I take one puff of this new medication. It's called Brio. And one puff a day, and that's it. <laughs> so... I, I wanted to tell you that. So in November, uh, that was my side story. Um, in November 2017, um, we, I got the results of a CT scan and everything showed that the, the low, low nodes around my lungs were stable since the CT scan I had in, in August. So everything was stable and, and stable in, in this world, I guess, is good. <laughs> At least that's what I've learned to know. Um, so, I've, I, uh, I had uh, visits in the clinics, I've had scans every three months, uh, Teresa's there every three months, Teresa Stokes, you know, we go through that each visit. After that, we've, uh, we've talked and I, I advise them that 
I'm good. I don't have any side effects. Uh, they advise me, other than the dry mouth, um, they advise me that, well, everything's stable. So since that time in November, I've continued on the clinical trial, it's two years, and I have two more infusions to go um, out of 35. And on December 12th, or December 21st, I'll be able to ring the bell in the chemo lab. So I, I, I want to, I, I do want to, uh, and that is my journey. That it really is my journey. I didn't tell you a lot about the side effects of the first drugs, but they were, they were a lot of, the Taflinara mechanism, there, there were a lot of side effects from it, but um, like fevers, like the chills that I had, like night sweats, I'd wake up in the middle of the night uh, two or three times and just soaked. Uh, but, but you know what? I didn't care because I felt this going down and down and down. I could, I could get through those side effects, right? Um, so so the, the last thing I will say is, and, and I'll, I'll wrap it up, and the gentleman up at the top here, he mentioned about, you know, how do the physicians and the, and the surgeons on the front lines, how do they get more information? And I think that's important. Because why should anyone have to wait over a year to get diagnosed with melanoma cancer? And why, would, why don't the surgeons or the, or the physicians know the difference between a sebaceous cyst and a possible uh, tumor underneath the skin? So I think that is absolutely important. The other thing I'd like to, I'd like to say is, is to all the patients in here, you know, um, I read a quote from Oprah a while ago, and her quote was, surround yourself with only people that can lift you. Um, this is how I manage through this. There is no time for negative energy in cancer. And, and the last thing I'll say is never give up, never give in. Thank you. <laughs>